Good morning, happy Sunday. Um, I am live here, blend I'm gonna be blending an ombre effect on this Bombay. Waiting for a few of you to get on. I know there's a couple ladies that are wanting to see this live. I tried to go live yesterday and my connection was terrible in my home. I don't, I think I need a new phone. So I'm sorry that this is kind of impromptu, but I don't have children right now. So it's a good time to get on and try to show you guys. There's some of you coming on, I see. Hello, good morning. Um, so sorry, it's a Sunday at 10 o'clock. I don't know how many of you are awake and painting at this time like I am, but I take advantage of it when I don't have children. So, um, okay, so yesterday I did, I, I kind of cheated, I'm so sorry, but I had everything ready for my live and then my phone wouldn't work. So I went ahead and already kind of sort of started to blend, but I'll give you a step process of what I've done so far. So this Bombay had a lot of holes and just blemishes to it that I had to fill first. So I cleaned it, filled all those with a like type of Bondo type of wood filler, um, sanded it. I pulled, well, my husband pulled all the felt out of these drawers for me, which we'll do that way later on. If you're here, say hi, cause I can't, I don't think I'm getting comments, but maybe no one said anything yet. Um, and so then I primed it with a shellac based primer. I love shellac primer, you guys. It's my go-to primer. It sticks really well to slick surfaces and this was a little bit slick even after sanding it. Um, and it had a little bit of like, I don't know what the wood is under it, but it had a pink hue to it. So I wanted to make sure I blocked it. Hi Marjorie, thanks for joining. Um, in fact, up top, I when I placed the drop cloth on and I let it sit, I think I see a little bit of bleed through where I sanded back a little far because I had to because of damage to it. And um, when I put the drop cloth on, it looks a little pink up there. So that's how you're gonna know if you're getting bleed through. So I'm gonna go ahead and just throw a little bit of more primer over that pink area before I get an another coat of the drop cloth. So that's what's on here right now is drop cloth. And then this is a custom mix shade um, that I did. It's vintage duck egg and drop cloth. So I just combined the two. Uh, vintage duck egg is just, I don't have, I have it on another piece, but it's really very blue to me. So I wanted to tone it down a little bit. And I even think I added like a tablespoon of collard greens. And these are all Dixie Belle colors. So collard greens, vintage duck egg, and drop cloth is this bottom color. And as you can kind of see, I've started to already blend them. There's a very harsh line here that I want to try to soften. When you are blending colors that are extremely different, like these two are, it takes a, for me, it takes a few blends. So I just know that my first blend's never, it's not gonna look perfect. You know, even, even the second one may not look perfect. It usually takes three, sometimes four. Now, if I was doing drop cloth and say like driftwood, which is a light gray, one or two blends would do it because they're very similar. So it's easier to blend. This is just a little more of a challenge. So um, my process now after I, I, so I base coated it, I laid out the blue and I laid out this color, let it dry, came back and I always sand between coats a little bit. That just keeps the paint, or it keeps the um, surface really smooth. Chalk, Dixie Belle chalk paint is chalky when it dries. And when you're blending, you wanna be able to get your brush, um, how do I say this, smoothly run your brush along the surface. So you want it to be nice and smooth. So I like to sand between all my coats of paint. So I haven't done that yet because I already started to blend my um, colors together. So I need to do a little more sanding and then we'll start blending. So I just use the Dixie Belle sanding sponges. I love these. I go through them pretty quickly. They're similar to like a probably 320 grit sandpaper. So if you just have 320 grit sandpaper, do that. Um, so I just need to lightly, and like seriously guys, I run my hand as I'm sanding because I can feel where it's rough and I can feel where I've sanded. And that's all it takes, like that, and it's already smooth. So I just like it to be, and that's just how you also get a really flawless finish. Like when I do all my blending, I really want to get a flawless finish. And so sanding um, enables that. I don't know if you can see, but I had to fill holes. And this is textured. So, and that's gonna get covered because where I had to fill my holes is really smooth now <laughs> from the putty. Um, so I'm just gonna cover it with like a transfer is probably what I'm gonna end up doing. Kind of similar to the last one, the last one thing I did like this.
I'm gonna get and move this back a little bit here. So do you see where that, uh, I kinda have some shadows going on in here. This harsh line here, I need to blend that better. Like I said, gonna take a couple tries, I think. Oh, I should have turned off my notifications. Um, uh, right now I can't, I definitely can't open the drawers, Marjorie, <laughs> but I don't need to. I'm going to paint them with them closed, um, for now. And then when I'm done, honestly, the best thing for me to do is just tip the, tip it forward. And this thing's heavy, but I'll just tip it forward and I'll help pull the drawers open. Cause you're right right now. I can't get them open. There's not going to be an easy way, but I don't want to have them open while I can't have them open while I'm blending. That would be too difficult, you know? So I'll just... When I'm done, I'll, I'll, I'll get them open and I'll paint the lip of it then. I almost always fill the hardware holes. I think because I just never know what hardware I'm going to use until I'm pretty much done. And then I figure it out. <laughs> So that's really it for the sanding. Um, it doesn't need a whole lot. I'm just gonna kind of wipe it. It doesn't really create a lot of sanding dust doing it that lightly, but I'm just gonna wipe it down a little bit. And I think I'll start with this side maybe here. And then I think I'll wait to do the top. I do need to give another coat to the top, but I think I have just a little bit of bleed through, so. Okay, let me get my paint here. It just is my custom mix, so I just mix it. It's kind of got little dried pieces of paint falling in there, but I just put it in one of these Tupperware containers. That's how, my, how I mix my paints. And I write what I mix usually on here, although I didn't do it, but I'm pretty sure it's Vintage duck egg, a little bit of collard greens, and then drop cloth. Okay, so the brushes. Okay, your must, you, the things you gotta have to do this are one of these misting spray bottles you can get from Amazon or Sally Beauty. And then I love, love, love Dixie Bell brushes. Um, so I'm gonna use oval medium. I don't know, I used oval medium yesterday. It was working pretty well for me. I bet that or the mini, Dixie Belle mini. Hi, Bernadette. Um, and then just any other, any other brush, it doesn't matter, like, because I'm just trying to lay on for my other two colors. I just any Dixie Belle brush. This is just what I have available right now, which is all different ones. The flat medium, the mini, and then the oval medium. Um, so for your blending brush, that needs to be dry. You wanna keep that very dry, like no paint on it. Just try to keep it as dry as possible when you're blending. And then your other two for laying your colors, I dampen these a little bit because I don't really need to lay on now the color, right? Because I have the color on here. I just need to blend these colors together. So I don't need very much paint at this point. Um, let's try to do this one side here first. The hard part is around this like leaf. I have a hard time getting around. Okay, I need to figure out how I can position this so you can see and I can see here. I'm gonna hit my wall. <clears throat> Is that better? Okay. Oh, and then a, I love like this terry cloth, or not my terry cloth, microfiber for drying my blending brush. Some kind of like towel or rag that you can just keep your blending brush like I wipe it back a lot to make sure it stays as dry as possible. I've got them like way too saturated, unfortunately, and then I just have to grab another blending brush. I tend to be a little heavy handed. So I wanna keep him dry. So I'm gonna keep him away from my misting of water here. And I'm just gonna basically lay out a little bit of drop cloth and a little bit of the blue and try to soften that line I don't like seeing right there with my two colors. So I'm just gonna dampen my brush. Which, did I miss a spot? I think I missed a spot down there. Do that real quick here. 
I'm not blending the back side of it. Um, does it matter? Yes. I see a spot right here I want to fix real quick. I don't need a lot of paint, but again, I tend to get a little crazy and get a little heavy handed. Just enough that when I start to blend them together, they'll work together. I'm trying to see where I need to kind of stop here. It goes up. Okay, a little bit of the drop cloth. It's hard with this texture. I will tell you, this is the hardest piece I've ever blended on. Again, this is my second one of these. And because of all just the little crevices and the texture it is very hard to blend on it I will say it I've blended on the smooth surfaces are so much easier okay so I feel like I probably need a little bit more blue but just a little bit I'm trying to soften that line that I was seeing so I'm already kind of blending them a little bit as I'm doing this part. And then when I get my dry brush. <laughs> okay, so making sure it's kind of nice and damp. I'm probably gonna pull, pull my, my blue kind of up into my um, drop cloth. And I'm gonna go kind of a little this direction and then I'll switch here in a minute. We're going vertical and horizontal. Like I can see already right here, I need to cover. There's like a splotch of blue. Just switching between my blue and my drop cloth here. Okay, there we go. Okay, now I'm going to kind of go back horizontal, bring air vertical and horizontal, just bringing that blue and up. got a little bit too much drop cloth down that direction it's hard when it's wet it's it looks good and then it'll dry and then you'll, that's when you'll notice um, that something's not quite right about it <laughs> that's probably why it takes me three or four blends to get it right and that's okay I mean don't get discouraged if it's not right the first or second time it just it takes a lot of practice light hand with this guys just really light hand i'm barely touching the surface i'm just pulling those colors and i'm probably you probably say that looks good enough to me but i'm just want to keep because i know when it dries that's when you get those harsh lines okay how does that look like i know there's so many shadows on this here maybe i should increase my light a little bit is that better you're still just seeing shadows how does that look? That looks better to me, but I can almost see when it dries, there's not that just harsh line that was there before. A 
pulling around this like leaf design was really difficult because it, it curves around this corner. So that looks pretty good though. Um, it might need one more blend, maybe. We'll see. Okay, this is always the hard part because I try to do like this whole section, so I have to move pretty quickly. I don't like smaller sections are easier than trying to like blend a whole big area. Um, I don't know what that is. It looks like a little chip. All right, so same thing here. We're just gonna lay out. I'm gonna dampen it first. Lay out my blue. I see just a couple of areas of the primer coming back through. Can you see okay? camera I always think it looks more harsh than in real like actual life it just but you know what I'll do I'll grab out my phone after this is dry of course and I'll look at my piece through my phone because I know when I go to photograph if, if it looks really harsh to me I will keep blending it is it when I go to photograph I don't want it to look like it's not blended but for some reason your phone the phone just seems to make it look a little more like it's more harsh, harsh, harshness to it. Okay, this is my drop cloth. It's really dry in here too, so I feel like I really have to mist a lot more than usual. I'm kind of pulling that drop cloth already with my wet brush down into there. It'll just make it easier to fade that line. I can still see it here. The light from my ring light, it's hard to tell. Okay, so now I think I can kind of blend those. It's looking pretty good already without, I think it might, I think it doesn't really need a third blend, but we'll see when it dries. It's hard with my ring light to tell. <laughs> and then you guys are seeing my shadow, I'm sorry. I've got a window behind me. Okay, so that actually looks pretty good. 
I'm just gonna touch up some areas down here because obviously I'm not blending down here. So if I see where I kind of need to touch up from when I sanded, when you sand back, when you have a white primer basically under this blue color and you sand back, sometimes you get like a little bit of your primer that peeks through. So I might have to kind of lighten up on my sanding a little bit here. I almost dipped that in my draw cloth. Wouldn't that be terrible? I have done that before. Okay, how's that looking, guys? Lori, you are here. Hi. You and Cynthia had me dying laughing earlier. Okay, how's that looking, guys? Thank you, Lori. I feel like I'm really not teaching you much because I just, it's, I don't know. I, there's not much to see, I feel like. That's <laughs> kind of boring, but. <laughs> okay, I want to do this other side here. I'm just so glad you're awake. I was afraid no one would join because people are probably still sleeping. Okay, so I, I think that looks pretty good. Sometimes I have to, does any of you like have to stand back and look at it? Because like you get like you stare at it for too long and then you can't tell. Um, there's so many shadows on it right now, guys. So I'm sorry, but it, it actually does look pretty. Um, it looks pretty well blended together. So now we just have this other side. I wonder if I could like try to get rid of some of these shadows here for you guys. Let's see if that helps. Is that worse? Oh, I just see the shadow of me now. Sorry guys, I don't have the best lighting. You should see my workspace. I'd work in there, but it's got like, I don't even know how many pieces of furniture in there right now. For those of you who don't know, I'm opening a booth um, in my local uh, mercantile place here next month. So I'm like trying to really bust out a bunch of pieces and I'm getting inventory in as far as like wholesale home decor items. So I just have like boxes and furniture. I just have stuff everywhere. So. House is a mess. I have, I have this piece next to me over here that I'm trying to finish up for somebody. So I've just got stuff everywhere. Okay, so here's a really prominent line. I'm gonna soften that a lot. And there's a lot more blue to this side. And I can see where I need to touch up down here, but I'm gonna work kind of top to bottom. Since I'm spraying, I wanna kind of work top to bottom. So I'm gonna touch up some of the drop cloth up here first. Ooh, did I dip that in here? Looks like there's blue on it a little bit. Getting in these nail heads is a challenge. Soften right in there with that line. Pull that drop cloth down in there a little bit more. in mind that corner. Okay, so you guys still see? Um, Marjorie, I will probably seal, most of the time I use Gator Hide or the Dixie Belle Clear Satin. That one's my favorite. Um, I tend to Gator Hide like all of my tops of pieces because it's just more durable. Um, and then the body will do 
um, the satin. Because the satin is just easier to use than the gator hide. Um, I brush on the satin and then usually with the gator hide I use like a uh, staining pad to apply it because it's, I don't know if, how, if you know this, but it's just a, that product, gator hide is just a, it's not as user friendly as far as applying it. A lot of people get streaks and I do too. I, to this day, I still get a little bit of streaks with it so I don't love using it, but I did get a new sprayer. Um, so I spent a lot of money on it so I'm considering just spraying on my top coats from now on. Um, it would go much faster because I usually do two coats of my sealer. All right, I need to get this kind of going because it's drying a little bit. A little more drop cloth. I need to see where my... I'm just going to get a little more drop cloth in there just to again soften that. And this is with my wet kind of brush right now. Um, this corner is going to be a little bit of a challenge, I think. Let me get that. There we go. Okay. That's my dry brush now. Um, that's okay, Lori. Um, it was, it's a custom mix. It's um, vintage duck egg and drop cloth, mainly, and then a little bit of collard greens, just to soften the blue, because it was really, really, really blue to me. Um, just to soften it. So... And I think if, in the beginning I was talking about how with colors being this different from each other, it takes a couple of blends maybe to get it nice and blended. Because these colors are quite a bit different from each other. Like if I was blending a light gray with this drop cloth, it would be a little easier. I'm just adding a little more blue here with this blue, uh, my blue brush. So now that I've kind of gone that direction, I'm going to go back this direction. I love blue. Anything that has the blue. What are you explaining? Oh, just water. Just water. Is, that's the only thing in this bottle here. And this is my second blend, okay? So I already laid out the colors, okay? And then I tried to go live yesterday and my stupid phone wasn't working and I had everything ready and I couldn't help myself. So I went ahead and started to blend um, one, I already did one blend, so this is my second blend. And I always have trouble right in this spot right here because it kind of comes up, those two colors kind of come up right there. So I'm just trying to make sure that looks yeah, I normally don't work on the weekends, but my kids and my husband are camping, and so I am taking full advantage of that and painting. I just don't have the mindset to paint on the weekend. I like usually just try to do laundry and clean. I have three young ones, so I'm constantly have other things I need to be doing, but okay. So that looks pretty good to me. The ring light's throwing me off. It's like, it's hard for me to see, but I think it looks pretty well blended. What do you guys think? We'll see when it's, um, when it dries. My problem is like I'm doing all this in my kitchen, okay? And so it'll sit here in my kitchen and I'll be sitting on the couch like watching TV and I'll look over and I'm like, oh, I should, I see something I did wrong and I'll get up and start painting again. So I don't really know when to quit is my problem. Lori, I know you're like that too. So the back is just the drop cloth. I'll turn it so you can see, but I don't think I need to blend the back. I thought it would just kind of be unnecessary. Although it does need a second coat of the drop cloth back there, but You'll see just a little watermark right there. I'm going to kind of get rid of that. And I see where I could have blended a little better here. So 
and just kind of alter between my brushes right now. This is the drop cloth brush and my blue. Just already kind of, I already kind of just mold them together before I take my dry brush. And it just, cause you'll get, when you're using your wet brush, you'll get a little bit of the streakiness. And then when you use your dry brush and you kind of just lightly go over it, that's what's gonna blend them together nicely. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. Might need a little bit more up here, but that looks good. <laughs> okay, and then this is just the back. I, I mean, what's your guys' opinion? I don't think it needs blending on the back because I mean, it's going to probably go up against the wall, but it's a finished back, so. Oh, yeah, I totally get that faux metal look. Yeah, I get that. Because I kind of did this on this piece over here. I used the metallics. And I, um, Lori, what kind of technique are you using to get the faux metal? Um, I did, I used sea sponges and I layered colors and it gave it, I don't know, it's a really cool, I don't know if you, I can turn and show you guys. But it's pretty smooth. The metallic smoothed it out pretty well. And that was a customer request. She wanted that kind of, um, silver and the gold when you do a piece as a natural stain top and painted body um usually stain um again it just it just depends sometimes i don't know like what color stain i want i usually do my tops last because i don't that's easy enough to go back and paint it if i wanted to paint it later on um but i'll typically stain last um because I'll look at something and say, oh, I think I want espresso, and then I'll paint it, and I'll say, oh, espresso's too dark. I want, you know, the walnut or something. So I usually just do them last. Um, oh, thank you, Amy. Yeah, I love these colors. And they seem to sell well. People seem to like their creams and grays. I do too. Blue. Um, and that's mainly why I'm doing these colors, because... This is probably going to go in my booth, um, unless it sells before the booth opening, but yeah, I'm trying to just do more neutral colors right now for that reason alone. Okay guys, so I think that's it. I don't, um, there's so much I can, else I can do to it except for let it dry. So I'll just let it dry and see how it looks. And then if it needs another coat, you know, another blend, I'll go ahead and, um, sand it a little bit and then blend again and then I think just like the other one I think I'll probably do I just use decor wax on those nail heads the eternal decor wax by Dixie Belle or is it Dixie Belle or Prima Prima I think it is and then maybe a transfer what's your guys's opinion I used the uh never ending story on the other one which is the the writing the cursive writing um the and then some birds I think I used on it and it went a client purchased it before I was even finished with it so um again might be a good idea to just duplicate that look since it seemed to do well brushed metal swirl with my brushes using the metallic stuff. oh okay okay Laura yeah be cool. that that sounds interesting I'd like to see it I'm trying different techniques with the brushed metals too to see what I like best okay guys so I think that's it unless anyone has uh, <laughs> thank you, David. Yeah, the it's actually kind of a similar color. Can you tell I really like blues? I think it really looks like, seriously, can you? It looks like the Bombay, no joke. I don't know what that color is called, but yeah, I love that color. All right, guys, so I know that my husband's on his way home with the kids, so I know this would be a very short live, but I hope that that was helpful. Um, if if I see it needs a second blend, I can come back on and we can do that again. But I think you guys probably got the gist of it. So then it will just be opening these drawers and doing the lip here. And then I'll probably, dec or I'll probably um, yeah, decoupage the, I like those textured wallpapers. I do that a lot in these like unfinished drawers that don't look very nice. So I'll probably do that. All right, guys. Yes, Lori, I'd love to see a picture of it. And thank you guys for joining. I appreciate it. I'm so sorry I wasn't able to go live yesterday, but we got it working today. So, all right, guys. Well, enjoy your Sunday. Bye.